Listen, we've all been there. You sit down to watch a movie and bam, an intrusive thought pops up in your head. I should get a new TV. And trust me when I say that I've had this thought more than a few times since I got my 55 inch Samsung LED TV 12 years ago. But the thing is, I just love the wall hugging slim profile and the almost invisible bezel of this TV. Not to mention the amazing picture quality and the 120Hz refresh rate, which is great for gaming. Even with the latest TVs having higher resolutions, better panels, cheaper prices, what have you, I can't find any reason worthy enough to convince myself to replace it. But I just had to scratch that itch somehow. So instead, I decided to breathe some new life into my existing one by installing an active LED backlight. A glow up for the TV, if you will. An active or dynamic backlight is essentially an LED strip wrapped around the back perimeter of a TV that displays the same colors as what's on the screen, in real time. This bleeding of colors onto the wall makes the borders of the TV feel like it's disappeared and puts on quite the light show for the viewer. After seeing how it enhances the TV watching and gaming experience, I really wanted to incorporate it into our setup. There are plug and play kits available from companies like Philips, Govi, and Nanoleaf that come with various configurations and at different price points. But the ones I wanted cost too much and the others used a camera system to capture the image on the screen, which I didn't want. So I did some research on TV backlights and there were a few DIY solutions that seemed doable. In the end, I decided to go with one that had both an affordable price point and a no camera setup. On the hardware side, this build required a Raspberry Pi, a capture card, and an LED light strip. Typically, the setup only allows for one device to be connected to it, but what I did was add an HDMI splitter into the mix so that we can have backlighting for both our Amazon Fire Stick and Xbox One. I also needed a micro SD card, a micro USB to USB A cable, three HDMI cables, a power supply for the LED light strip and Raspberry Pi, a braille jack connector, and a couple of DuPont wires. The way that this setup works is that the HDMI outputs from the Xbox One and Amazon Fire Stick are connected to the inputs to the splitter. A singular output signal from the splitter is fed into the capture card. The capture card then relays the video signal via USB to the Hyperion Hyper-V application on the Raspberry Pi, which then processes it and lights up the LED strip accordingly. There's also a separate HDMI signal leading from the capture card to the TV's input to display the image on the TV itself. On the software side, this setup needs the open source application called Hyperion Hyperbean, which I mentioned earlier, that I installed onto the Raspberry Pi using the Raspberry Pi imager. I also used PuTTY to connect to the Raspberry Pi via Wi-Fi. I linked all of these applications in the description below. First things first, I needed to install Hyperion Hyperbean onto the Raspberry Pi. I downloaded the latest version of the image and unzipped it. I went ahead and popped in the SD card into the reader and opened up the Raspberry Pi imager. I clicked on Choose Device and I selected the model that I'm using, which is the 3. Then I clicked on Choose OS, scrolled down to Use Custom, selected the Hyperion Hyperbian image and hit Open. After that, under Storage, I selected the SD card. The last thing that I had to do was to click on Next and then select Edit Settings to set up some additional details, including the host name, username and password, Wi-Fi details and time zone. Oh, and it's crucial to enable SSH as well. Then I hit save, followed by yes to apply the settings, and yes again to write onto the card. Finally, I hit continue. Once it was done installing, I put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and powered it up. I then opened up PuTTY and did the following. Using the host name from the setup in Raspberry Pi Imager, I entered it into PuTTY. In the login as prompt, I entered the username and password that I also set up in the Raspberry Pi Imager. Lastly, I needed to enable the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi by switching to the root user using these two commands. Hyperion Hyperbian was now ready to use.
I realized fairly quickly that the light from the LED strip would not have enough space to spread across the wall because I have a slim profile TV mount. The lights needed to be angled outwards to get a better spread so I fashioned some cardboard triangles to stick onto the TV and then attached the LED strip to it. The Raspberry Pi and capture card also needed to be secured onto the back of the TV, so I had to work on an idea placement for them. Once I figured it out, I used double sided tape to hold them down. Using a micro USB cable I found at home, I stripped the wire on the standard USB connector end. I took the red power wire from the LED strip and the red wire from the stripped USB wire and twisted them together. I did the same thing using the white ground wire from the LED strip and the black one from the USB wire. Then I inserted the twisted red power wires into the positive side of the barrel jack connector and the twisted ground wires into the negative side. I then took a DuPont connector, plugged one end into the GPIO 18 pin connector on the Raspberry Pi and the other end into the data connection of the LED strip. As a precaution, I added a grounding wire from the LED strip to the GPIO 6 pin on the Raspberry Pi. Next, I connected a USB wire from the capture card to the Raspberry Pi. I then plugged the power into the barrel jack connector but I didn't plug it into the wall just yet. I wanted to finish setting up the rest of the peripherals first. I took the HDMI cables coming from my Xbox One and Amazon Fire Stick and connected them into the HDMI 1 and 2 input ports with the splitter. I then connected a cable to the HDMI output port and connected that into the HDMI input port on the capture card. From there, I connected an HDMI cable from the HDMI output port on the capture card into the TV HDMI input port. I had to readjust the positions of the Raspberry Pi and capture card to allow for the wires to sit properly. I wish I thought of it before mounting it the first time. With all of the connections made, I did some cable management, taping together the ones hanging below the TV and securing others on the back using cable clips. This was the final hardware setup. And the hardest part, I mounted the TV back up while trying my hardest not to touch the LED strip on the back. To maintain a clean minimal look, I routed all of the cables into my TV stand and hid the exposed cables that we lived with for the past couple of years using a cable cover. This also allowed me to hide the HDMI switch inside of my TV stand, which I secured to the underside using double sided tape right at the front for easy access.
And finally, I took the time to count out the number of LEDs on each side of the TV. I needed this for the next part of the configuration. If I had taped it directly to the back of the TV, I would have done this before mounting it back up. With the hardware installed, it was time to boot up the Raspberry Pi and change some settings. First, I opened up Hyperion Hyper-V in a browser on my PC. I went into the LED output options under LED instances. Beside controller type, I chose WS281X. Under maximum LED count and hardware LED count, I entered the total number of LEDs that I counted. I hit save settings and then continue. Then I went into LED layout and changed it to classic layout. I entered the number of LEDs for each side. For the input position, I entered where the LED strip starts on the TV. This position is based on looking at it from the front of the TV and not from behind. After that, I hit save. I then switched the setting level to expert to get more options unlocked. Once the page reloaded, I went into capturing hardware and under USB capture, hit activate. I then changed the device resolution to 720 by 480 and up the frames per second to 30. I enabled signal detection and hit save. Finally, I went into image processing and changed the brightness gain to plus 3. This helps with increasing the light spread. I hit save one last time within the Hyperion Hyperbian application in order for all of these changes to take effect and bring the lights to life. I restarted the Raspberry Pi by opening up PuTTY and entered sudo reboot. If you enjoyed this video or are planning to try this at home, please do me a solid and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.